You know, I really liked the Into the Spider-Verse first movie. I was one of those who saw it in the theater more than once. Uh, I really talked up the movie, the people, and I was surprised the number of adults who did not go and see it in its first theatrical run. And I think that's just a general problem in the U.S. Unless something is Pixar or Disney, people just think that animated is basically for kids, even though I don't understand that we're in the age now where anime is mainstream. Um, so I don't understand why so many people did not go and see the movie. But be that as it may, um, the movie got an award. You got a game come out that featured Miles Morales. And so people were able to check out the movie again in streaming. And this time around, when Across the Spider-Verse came out, that first day I went to see it and the theater was packed. I haven't seen the theater that packed in a while. And so here I was, a, a black male sitting there ready for the movie. I saw plenty of other black men there. I also saw plenty of black boys there who either got their moms or their dads or both to bring them to the theater. And we were all excited to see the next adventure of Miles Morales. And don't get me wrong, the advertising emphasized Miles Morales. You would not have Across the Universe if you did not have Miles Morales. Yes, you have all the other variations of spider beings in this universe, but it all revolves around Miles Morales. So imagine my surprise as a, a writer, a screenwriter, a, a teacher, when I'm sitting there and we get the introduction and we immediately have Spider-Gwen recounting Miles's story from the first movie as she's playing the drums. And it's all cool. The animation, again, is just out of this world. It's, it's fantastic, the different styles. All of that is fine. And she wraps up and then we follow her and we continue to follow um, Spider-Gwen. And I have to say that I was wondering, well, where is Miles? And the rest of the people in the audience, particularly the young people and, and the other people, we, I could feel the question. It's like, where's Miles? And it goes on what I learned later because I go see it again because I was unsure about how I felt about the beginning of the movie. <laughs> Once I came out, of course, the movie is fantastic. And even Spider-Gwen's introduction is fantastic. It's well done. No argument there. But it did feel like a bait and switch. And it was because the marketing and everything emphasizes Miles Morales. And we're all sitting there and we're wondering as we're 10 plus minutes into this movie and it's all Spider-Gwen's story. And... For me, it again, it felt like a bait and switch. So, I again, I went to see it a second time. And we are actually, before you get your first real credits, you are 10 minutes into this movie. And again, as a writer, as somebody who teaches um, screenwriting to adults, it's like, I understand what they did. I understand that this was Gwen's story. She's the main character. You rarely ever have another character who you introduce, you introduce their story, you are building sympathy. Those first 10, 15 minutes are key for building sympathy and audience identification with the character. That's what we did for Gwen. And I know in the larger scheme of things, okay, yeah, we really didn't go into her backstory in the first one. And so this is a time to go into it. And again, all of that's fine. Even having her as the main character is fine. It's just that your marketing did not show that you advertised who you knew was going to draw people in. And that's Miles Morales. But you did a bait and switch and you gave us Gwen Stacy, Spider Gwen, as the main character. And they did it very well. Again, they did it very well. But we spend all the time learning her problems, what's motivating her, what's bothering her and her situation. They made a choice to make her the main character, and she is the main character because we start with her and we also end with her. The movie is bookend by Spider-Gwen. But what about Miles? Well, some people are trying to say that, well, maybe they have more than one hero. It's very rare for a movie to have more than one hero, and most of the time those movies don't work. What I am arguing and what I'm pointing out is that Miles Morales was not the hero or not the main character of this movie. What Miles Morales was is what they call an endangered innocent. And for those of you who might not know what that is, an endangered innocent 
is basically an ally of the main character. And of course, we see that Miles is totally an ally of what she's going through. When they finally meet up and they're talking, he is very attentive to where she's coming from, what she's saying and how she feels. And she's aware of that. That scene is all about her, not Miles. When they first meet up and they're sitting there and they're talking and Miles is going to hold her hand. But he's again, he's listening to what she says. So he changes his mind and you see them show her noticing him doing that. She's totally controlling that situation. An endangered innocent serves as the story goal. And Miles was the goal of the story. That person who is at risk and must be found and or rescued. They can be a man, a woman, a child or a group. Sometimes the story of the endangered innocent gets expanded to become a subplot action line. That's exactly what happened with Miles. His wanting to get back home becomes the subplot action line and he becomes the focus of the story because they have to save him. He is endangered from the very beginning, the moment he crosses over into the, the Spider-Verse, all the way up to the very end when he is facing a version of himself who is the prowler in his universe, Miles is in extreme danger. And who has to save him? The main character, Spider-Gwen. And we see her gathering her friends and people who know Miles and have met Miles, and they are going to rescue him or help him in the next movie. But from start to finish, you see the, the danger for Miles and the danger that he is in reaches a crescendo and again all of this is well done and there's no problem with having another character as the main character but sony knew what they were doing and in the marketing they deliberately did not play it that way they played it up as miles because they knew what the draw was if i have a problem with it is not the fact that it wasn't well done it was extremely well done it's the fact that you did a bait and switch you made us believe that miles was going to be the first person I mean, the main character, but then you switch and you make it about Spider-Gwen. Again, nothing wrong with that, but why not put that in the marketing? Why not make it known? And who will be the main, actual main character in the third? I don't know. The way it's set up, it could still be Spider-Gwen. And again, for any of those who want to argue that, no, they were both main characters, then why not start with Miles? There were plenty of times in his story where they could have then used what was happening with him as a visual cue to then go to Gwen's story, particularly those times when he's looking at his sketchbook and he's looking at all the sketches of her. Those could have been perfect times for them to then transition over to her and you could have spent the next 10 minutes telling her story. It's clear they, wanted, they knew where they wanted this to end and it was going to end with her getting the band together to go and save Miles. So what do they do? They decided to also start with her. And by doing that, audience builds identification with her. She's the main character. And Miles Morales is the endangered innocent. And so I just thought I'd just come and just point that out because I've seen people, again, trying to say that it was two main characters. No, it really isn't. You have a antagonist, you have a protagonist, and then all the other characters fall into all these different categories, as many as 14 categories. And Miles neatly, very clearly fall into the category of an endangered innocent in a movie that was supposed to be about him being a main character, but he really isn't. It is Spider-Gwen. Again, nothing wrong with that, but you have to question the bait and switch marketing. Why not just advertise it as that way? And we all know why, because we know who the draw is. 